We used to act such a fool in this room so many times. Kids would be up there trying to give their plays and we'd be back here laughing, not paying any attention. And not thinking about the teacher. What happened was, I was told to um, report to the board meeting uh, on the day I was to be appointed. What year was this? Uh, it was uh, the summer of 1969. And uh, before I even went into the board meeting, I went to meet a very important official for the board. And I asked this official, I said, if it's possible, because I see there's a vacancy at the race school, if it's possible, I would like to be assigned. And the person said, I'll get back to you. I was sitting in the boardroom waiting for the meeting to start, and this official secretary came, and she gave me a little piece of paper that was this big. And I started to unfold it. And when I unfolded it said R-A-Y. <laughs> so I knew before the board even announced it that I was going to be appointed to the ray. Why did I want to go to the Ray? First of all, uh, when I was preparing for the principalship ex examination, the board used to have a, a, an exam, uh, a written exam, six different areas. You had to be uh, aware of administration, supervision, language, mathematics, science and social studies. You had to pass all of them. About 2,000 took the test that 82 of us passed. We were put on a list after that. I was number 32 of the 82. And my number was coming up, and that's why I was asked to go to the board meeting. And um, I um, was very, very aware that uh, Ray School was in the Hyde Park area, University of Chicago area. I had studied there to prepare for the... Uh, principal's exam. I used to pass the school all the time and said, you know, this old building's got a little special touch to it. And I thought, I saw the, uh, the nice playground, and I saw all this land behind it, but I didn't know at the time that uh, it didn't belong to Ray. And so, um, and I saw the small building at the other end, and uh, I, I said, boy, this would be a nice little challenge for me to start. What I didn't realize is when I finally was appointed to school that the previous principal, and I won't mention his name, was 
was going to transfer, let's put it that way. And um, Dr. Melnick uh, told me, he said, I want you to do a good job. I said, don't worry about that. I do a good job wherever I go. I think there was a little suspicion that maybe I was going to have trouble too, as the previous principal seemed to be having. But I told you, I had such wonderful training all the way from elementary to university level that I wasn't fearful of anything. I was going to go into this school and we were going to develop it. I was stunned at that meeting when the chair looked at me and her first question was, what are you going to do to improve Ray's school? That gave me an awareness, something, something's up at this school. But it, I quickly said, wait a minute, you got it wrong. You should be asking me, what are we going to do? Because I never do anything by myself. And from that point, we discussed the various elements that I would be addressing. I said, first of all, I will bring safety to your school. I said, any child that comes to that school will be safe. I will make sure of that personally and collectively with the faculty. I said, secondly, after I become aware of the total instructional program, I said, I will work towards even improving it. I said, I want you to understand, I have great respect for Ray. I know your past history. I said, I don't know of any recent trouble, but as soon as I'm made aware of it, I will address it. And unfortunately for that chair, within a couple of weeks, bef just before school opened, she was involved, her family was involved in a car accident in New York, and her son, who was a race student, was killed in the accident. And I remember that was one of my first duties of going to the synagogue for his uh, funeral services. So at this point, I did not have her as the chair. I had another person as, as, as the chair, and I think it was a Mr. Steinhoff. And even Mr. Steinhoff was a little wary of me, but after a while he said, you were the right one to be appointed to this school. And I was standing outside when I noticed a group of youngsters, teenage youngsters at the far door, the south gate where the playground was. So I walked down there and I asked them, can I help you? And their reply was, who the F are you? Mistake. Well, I made them understand that I was the F and new principal. They then quickly said, we chased the last one out. We'll chase you out. And I said, get your track shoes, kids, because the race is on. I immediately had called for a police, a 911. But unfortunately, I had to go in the building to do this. While I was in the building, whoever they were waiting for, they were attacking. And I, have to, I had bought a beautiful Armani suit for my first day at Ray. And I jumped into this melee, and I ripped my pants leg on that beautiful new suit. The police car was there, and all six of those youngsters ended up at the uh, station with the youth officer. And we wait, I waited till six o'clock before their parent came. And I told the parents, well, first of all, I asked the parents if their children belonged at the school, and they said no. I told them what they had done. Parents were very upset. I said, I'll make a deal with you. I said, I'm the new principal there. I said, if you promise me that I will not have your children 
bothering my or even around grade school, I will not prosecute. I will not sign papers that your children will have to go to court. They said, fine, you will never see our children around race school again. I said, we have a deal. And I started to walk out of the room and I looked back at the six youngsters. I said, by the way, tell all your friends there's a new principal at race school. That was the start of me getting the, high, the Woodlawn youngsters to understand I mean business.